Point of order, Douglas Ross. Grateful Deputy Returning Officer, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I wondered if you would accept a motion without notice under Standing Order uh, 8.14.3 to allow an extension of this item of business by up to 30 minutes. Uh, there is precedent for doing this. There is serious implications with the uh, statement the uh, Health Secretary is making today. There is a lot of concerns and questions uh, that understandably people in Murray and across the wider North East and Highlands want to hear about. Uh, and I hope you would view favourably uh, a motion without notice under those terms. Uh, thank you, Mr Ross, and thank you for the advance notice of the point of order. At this stage, I'm minded not to accept the, the point of order, but certainly will keep it under review as business proceeds uh, and happy to review it later on in proceedings. But on that basis, I invite the Cabinet Secretary um, for up to 10 minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to update members on the Scottish Government's response to Rafe Roberts' review of maternity services in Murray. As a result, I am delighted to set out the next steps for the reintroduction of consultant-led maternity services at Dr Gray's Hospital in Elgin. This will not be easy, but with effort and targeted investment, I believe it can be delivered. I understand the urgency and the importance of this issue. It has been imperative for me to hear directly from those most affected, namely local people uh, and the clinicians working in both Dr Gray's and Rakemore hospitals, and indeed, of course, the local elected members before making my decision. I know across this chamber we all want maternity services across Scotland to be delivered safely and as close to home as practical. The Murray Maternity Independent Review, commissioned by my predecessor, Jean Freeman, was carried, out, carried forward with a thorough and consultative approach. I want to again record my thanks to Rafe Roberts and the review team for their excellent work. These have not been decisions I have taken lightly. I have taken time to consider the recommendations in discussion with a range of interested individuals and groups. I started that process in December when the review was first published and concluded it last week with a visit to both Ragmore and to Dr Gray's, where I met senior teams, clinicians, local people and elected members. I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to provide their thoughtful contributions to the discussions and welcome the wide-ranging views that were presented to me. Rafe Roberts' team explored six potential models of service delivery for maternity services in Murray and made 37 recommendations for improvement to care. The report recommended that in the short term, NHS Grampian and NHS Highland move to a community maternity unit in Dr Gray's network, primar primarily with Ragmore for consultant-led care, but with women requiring tertiary maternity care or neonatal care going to Aberdeen. This was titled as Model 4 in the aforementioned report. It went on to recommend that NHS Grampian undertake a review of the role of Dr Gray's Hospital, potentially moving to a rural consultant supported maternity unit in Dr Gray's. This was titled as Model 5 in the report. Mr Roberts also made a number of recommendations in relation to short-term changes. They were around leadership, culture and workforce, and indeed on recruitment. As I have talked to people over the last three months, I have heard the full range of very different opinions about the future for maternity service is services at Dr Gray, and there are differences in opinion on the way forward. What I intend on doing today is setting the destination of where we want to get to, and in doing so, I will be upfront about the scale of the challenge ahead of us. Presiding officer, I have concluded that we will progress with Model 6, a full consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's, with Model 4 as part of the development towards that final destination. I hope this will see 80 to 90 per cent of Murray births taking place at Dr Gray's on the realisation of a consultant-led model, similar to the numbers that were taking place prior to the changes made in 2018. Presiding officer, I said at the beginning of this statement, delivery of a consultant-led service will not be easy and it will require significant investment, both in infrastructure but also in workforce. It will involve us collectively having to find solutions to really complex systemic problems that have challenged the Grampian region for many years, such as recruitment and retention. The priority for women of Murray is that they have access as soon as possible to the widest range of maternity services that can safely and realistically be delivered as close to home as possible. Let me be clear. I expect work on Model 6 to begin immediately. The first step in that journey is working through the detailed timeline of what is required by when. 
That will be done with independent oversight and clinical input. As I have said, Model 4 will be a critical component on the journey towards realising Model 6, a consultant-led maternity unit. Model 4 includes enhanced specialist antenatal and postnatal care in Dr Gray's to vastly reduce the need for women from Murray to travel, across, uh, to, to, travel to access these services. The additional infrastructure and resource that will be invested to achieve this goal will act as a bridge to the delivery of a Dr Gray's consultant-led service and accompany a wider plan for regeneration of services beyond maternity services at Dr Gray's. As Rafe Roberts' rep report recognises, it is essential that a consultant-led service is taken forward within the context of a revitalised vision for Dr Gray's. And this extends beyond maternity services to include increasing services at Dr Gray's for the whole population of Murray. NHS Grampian have already outlined plans to their board for development of a strategic vision and future plan for Dr Gray's, developed in collaboration with local communities and to re-establish the public faith in the sustainable future of Dr Gray's. However, we know this won't happen overnight. I know local people understandably want these services back as quickly as possible. We are committed to investing in the staff and delivering the required infrastructure to put these services in place on a secure and stable footing as quickly as possible. As possible. Now that I have stated clearly our intention to restore a consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's, it is imperative that we develop deliverable timescales for the interim service provision at Ragmore and, of course, the full service at Dr Gray's. Having listened to clinicians, I understand the importance of making changes in a phased manner to ensure safety for the women of Murray and for the women of the Highlands. I also recognise that facilities in Ragmore and Dr Gray's will need significantly improved to support this move. That is why, as a starting point, I will make £5 million available to invest in Dr Gray's to support moving forward with the changes in money. Presenting officer, in addition, it is clear that clinicians in Ragmore have concerns about the current facilities within which they are operating. With this in mind, we have made an initial provision for a further £5 million for redevelopment of Ragmore within our capital plan. This will allow plans to be brought forward to redevelop the maternity unit in Ragmore to provide an improved environment for the women of the Highlands and, in the interim, for the women of Murray who choose to have their baby there. Once planning is further develop, developed, we will also look at what additional funding may be required. And I again repeat my commitment to providing the necessary resources to support this change. This is an immediate commitment of £10 million from this government to enhance maternity services in Dr Gray's and Ragmore. The interim networked service will be developed with service users and will include delivery of the maximum possible amount of consultant-supported antenatal and postnatal services at Dr Gray's, reducing the need for women to travel to Aberdeen or Ragmore to an absolute minimum, and also delivering continuity of care for women in Murray. Having the clarity of a safe Model 4 will enable us to focus on maximising the number of women that choose to deliver in Dr Gray's by building trust, confidence and, of course, understanding of choice. This has the potential to significantly increase the number of women who can give birth at Dr Gray's. Those women who need obstetric-led care will have the choice of Ragmore or Aberdeen for their care until such time as consultant-led services are returned to Dr Gray's. The Chair, Chief Exec and Executive Team at NHS Grampian have sought to assure me of their focus and unstinting commitment as a board to the delivery of this model. I know there are concerns, and I heard this, heard this very clearly from campaign groups in Murray, that once Model 4 is in place, there will be no desire for further change. I heard this from not just local campaigners, but I also heard this from elected members in Murray too. So let me be clear. Model 6, a consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's, is what, what we will deliver. And no one has been left in any doubt about my decision. Implementing Model 4 will be, of course, a key component to achieving a consultant-led service, not an alternative to it. In addition, providing choice for Murray women that will also significantly improve the birthing environment for Highland women. NHS Grampian and NHS Highland have already started to pave the way for change and with a clear destination can start work immediately on the progression of planning and developing implementation plans. A process of accelerated planning will begin now and will conclude in the summer in relation to Model 4 changes and we will aim to have a clear timetable for the restoration of a full consultant-led unit as soon as possible thereafter. 
The plans will provide a timetable with milestones for delivery of both Model 4 and Model 6. Rafe Roberts made a number of other recommendations within the Murray Maternity Review on leadership, on workforce, on recruitment and on culture. I accept all of those recommendations. In his report and action, we will begin to take these forward, including in particular work to improve remote and rural staffing to support delivery of the staffing requirements for both Model 4 and Model 6 as they emerge, and commitment to providing the necessary funding to support delivery of these models. <clears throat> there will be an external assurance process built around this, which will include expert clinical input. I, uh, I, I know how important this is, in particular to local community groups uh, and indeed to elective representatives I have spoken to. In conclusion, planning officer, having made this decision, we will waste no time, no time at all, and work to progress with implementation, which will begin immediately. And we will urgently drive forward our work to restore consultant-led maternity services at Dr Gray's. I would be happy to keep Parliament updated, of course, when I have further details on milestones and timescales. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around about uh, 20 minutes, after which we will move on to the next item of business. Helpful, as ever, if members who wish to ask a question would press the request to seat buttons or place an R in the chat function. And I call firstly Douglas Ross. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And could I start by recognising the outstanding contribution made by Keep Mum and the Murray and Bamp Maternity Voices Partnership? who have campaigned tooth and nail eh, for the last four years to see the restoration of a consultant-led eh, maternity unit at Dr Gray's. And, and that's how long this has been going on for. Since 2018, we have been without that vital service in Murray. And the last time I addressed this issue with the Cabinet Secretary in this chamber, he accepted that was unacceptable. Uh, and my fear today is we are still a long way off from the restoration eh, of that service. And this has a huge impact, Deputy Presiding Officer, because Jill Skeen from the charity Lantnam, which is a maternal mental health support group from the North East of Scotland, said this in the PJ today. Speaking of Elgin, I don't actually know if I've met a mum who's not suffering as a result of being very worried about childbirth or as a direct result of a traumatic <coughs> birth from that area. They've said Elgin is the worst area for mental health issues pertaining to childbirth and pregnancy uh, anywhere they work. Uh, and that's so obvious, because since Rafe Roberts and his team produced their report, and we had a statement in this chamber, and up to today, we've had more and more traumatic stories from Murray mums. Many of them have been very well articulated by the Keep Mum group, but one, Alexandra Naylor, stands out above all the rest. She spoke of her horror and her terror at having to give birth in a lay-by on the A96. She was being transferred from Elgin to Aberdeen in labour and couldn't even get there. This is the situation we are dealing with right now. And as I also alluded to uh, with the Cabinet Secretary when he came to Murray last week, that's not just a one-way journey. You have to come back again. And if I can, just for a moment, Deputy Presiding Officer, speak about my personal experience. I have spoken in the chamber before about how Crystal had to go through to Aberdeen to, to give birth, and that was traumatic. That is something I don't want any other mum or family to go through. But then we had to come back again, and our son was born at 1.45am, and we were released from Aberdeen at 9am. So, less than eight hours old, we are taking an infant child back to Murray. He had to sit in the car for two hours. Now, I have not spoken about this, but shortly after he was born, James spent almost a week under the excellent care at the Royal Sick Kids Hospital in Aberdeen because he had breathing issues and, and chest problems. And ever since then, I've had to wonder, is it because of that journey he was forced to make as such a, an infant child? Did that have a, a contribution to his problems uh, a few weeks later? And every time I saw him in hospital, being fed with a tube down his nose and getting oxygen pumped into him, so helpless, I had to wonder, could that have been avoided? if he was able to be born in Elgin and just be 10 or 15 minutes away from home. So these are the issues. It's not just the worry about childbirth, it's the worry then eh, about coming back eh, to Murray. So the Health Secretary has confirmed today, and I welcome this, that Model 6 is his preferred option. But of course, he confirmed that almost a year ago. 
he stood on a manifesto commitment to restore a consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's. It was a commitment I introduced to the Scottish Conservative manifesto and I was delighted to see in the SNP manifesto. So we are where we were this time last year. But Model 6, that restoration of a consultant-led maternity unit, must be the focus and the priority. Because he is right, there is a genuine fear that Model 4, with more Murray women going to Inverness, will become the norm. Eh, and that cannot be acceptable. So how does he reassure people in Murray that that won't happen? Also, I've raised in the Chamber before clinicians from Raid Moore, who raised serious safety concerns. They said, and I quote, that findings of the Rafe Roberts report, and Model 4 in particular, were unworkable and unsafe. Have they now been reassured by the Cabinet Secretary and have they changed their position? Will NHS Grampian fully support what the Government are proposing today? And how does he answer the serious concerns, again repeat, um, relayed in the independent review from Rafe Roberts, that there has been a lack of investment in Dr Gray's for years. NHS Grampian have neglected our hospital for years, and there is serious concerns that they are not fully behind these plans. As Rafe Roberts said, Dr Gray's has not had the investment similar hospitals elsewhere in Scotland have, eh, and that has to be addressed, and I would be very interested to know what the Cabinet Secretary's response is to that. Can I finally ask, what will the investment at Dr Gray's be, and when will that take place? When will the full consultant-led maternity unit be up and running? We have got no timescales, no milestones. We need a date. And what is happening right now for women and families who have to endure a blue light transfer to Aberdeen or Inverness and the staff that have to go with them? Finally, the Cabinet Secretary said his aim is for 80 to 90 per cent of births at Dr Gray's. We all support that, but we need to know when. Will it even be during this Parliament? Can we get a date, a month, a year, when that will be done so we can hold this government to account, hold the health board to account and pledge the restoration of the services that people in Murray so desperately need? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. I thank Douglas Ross uh, for his, his questions. And, uh, can I also join with him in praising Keep Mum, Murray Voices partnership and all the other local campaigners? Can I also praise the cross-party campaign? I think it has been an excellent cross-party campaign and genuinely cross uh, party as far uh, as I can see. Um, and, and, and can I say that um, his questions in around pace and concern that Model 4 will become the norm and there will be little work done on, on Model 6 is a fear that I understand uh, and that I understand community groups also share. And, and that's why it's so important for me and I suspect important for the campaigners and elected members that we have an independent assurance process alongside any work that's done because I heard very clearly uh, about the distrust uh, the local campaigners have uh, towards uh, the health board. They uh, also no doubt distrust uh, to some extent uh, uh, what we're seeing here in government. So I wanted to give them an absolute assurance that um, I am committed uh, to Model 6 uh, and, and that return to consultant-led uh, maternity services. But to give them additional assurance, we will uh, have that independent oversight, and that will include independent clinical oversight as well. Um, in terms of uh, uh, his own uh, story, and I, I thank uh, Douglas Ross for sharing his own personal uh, circumstances uh, once again. Um, first of all, let me say that I hope uh, his son James uh, fully recovers. Uh, and also let me say that obviously I do not have the clinical uh, knowledge, of course, to say whether or not the journey back uh, uh, contributed uh, to uh, his breathing difficulties. But what I will say is that regardless uh, of that, uh, what I can say is that uh, that journey back, uh, hours when a child is hours old, is not something I would want for my child. Uh, and I suspect not what some, somebody, somebody would want for their newborn either. And I can't imagine, even from a parent's perspective, how tired you would be after, uh, 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 of course, uh, supporting uh, your partner uh, through, through birth and how tired she would be, uh, uh, the, 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 the woman who, who's given birth would be, uh, and therefore that journey uh, would be a difficult one. So we do want to minimise that uh, absolutely. In terms of, um, he says, Model 6 was something we committed to. Remember, Model 5 is also a consultant-led uh, model, a uh, rural consultant-led uh, model. Uh, model 6 is, goes that bit further, uh, and that's why I've made the decision to go with Model 6. I think it, is, uh, it matches the aspiration uh, of the community, uh, and that will be the focus. So I can give him an absolute guarantee that will be the focus. Uh, he asked a couple more uh, questions, President Officer, and, and, and they were around Ragmore clinicians. I met with Ragmore
clinicians, as he knows. They did express difficulty, concern, anxiety um, about the current facilities, and they, of course, have, have also written to me, and I think uh, members know that because they've made those letters public. Um, what, I will, what I will say is that I hope they have got, got some assurance from the fact that I have put investment on the table uh, for uh, uh, a, 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 an improvement in their facilities. Um, NHS Grampian do fully support the direction of travel. I have spoken to NHS Grampian. They understand my expectation uh, around Model uh, 6, but I again uh, fully uh, understand that the independent oversight uh, will be exceptionally important to community uh, groups and elected members. In terms of timescale, um, which was the, the, the last question, um, the reason why I can't give you a date right now is because, frankly, if we did that now, we would be plucking it out of the air. Now that I have set the destination, what we can do is work backwards. What does it take to get us to Model 6, to get Dr Gray's that full consultant-led maternity service? What investment is required? What staffing is required? What, uh, what, what, what needs to be done in terms of some of the systemic challenges that Grampian has faced over the years? But I can promise them two things. One, I will keep him and the Parliament updated on those timescales. We will be open and transparent about them. But the last thing, and I will end on this, is that we will uh, not uh, shirk away from our responsibilities in terms of the investment that is required for Model 6. Thank you. Question number two, Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would join with Douglas Ross in paying tribute to um, Keep Mum and Murray Voices campaigners in Murray for consultant-led maternity services. And I welcome the promise to reinstate um, consultant-led maternity services at Dr Grace and the very much needed investment at Dr Grace and Ragmore. But I cannot welcome with this short-term option. The Cabinet Secretary tells us he's listening to what those involved are telling him, but he's obviously not hearing what they say. Clinicians from Highland, NHS Highland wrote to him in February saying the board did acknowledge on this occasion that staffing and the built environment requirements for Model 4 cannot be met in the timescale proposed in the report, i.e. two years. This is of profound significance as it confirms that Model 4 is not an option for the short term. In addition, they say, our lead paediatrician give his opinion that our neonatal facility is at capacity and that any increase in birth rate at Rigmore before major upgrading to staffing and facilities will put babies at risk. They went on to make the point clearly that neither was this a feasible option because they were unable to fill, currently fill staffing vacancies and existing staffing were facing, face, were facing burnout. Many of these points were also made to him by the chief executive and community campaigners in Murray at meetings I also attended. Will he therefore reconsider option four because it's simply not safe? And will he outline what he's going to do in the short ter term to keep mums in Murray safe? Cabinet Secretary. See, uh, as far as I'm aware, neither Rhoda Grant or I are clinicians, so she's right, of course, to, to put forward the views of clinicians in Ragmore. Uh, just before the meeting I had with Rhoda Grant in Murray uh, last week, uh, she, 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 I, I was having a meeting with clinicians from Dr Gray's, and almost all of the clinicians in that room, uh, certainly all the ones that spoke, supported Model 4. So we have a difference in terms of a clinical input. I understand she's saying clinicians from Rigmore. I accept that clinicians from Rigmore have a concern. And I'm hoping what they'll be reassured by is the £5 million that I'm committing immediately and putting on the table. Uh, that is also why a timetable is exceptionally important. So I said in my statement that I would return uh, in the summer uh, to, 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 to give a detailed timeline of Model 4, what milestones will be achieved by when. And of course, I continue to reiterate that will have clinical input as, uh, from, from, from the clinicians at Ragmore, of course, but, and, and clinicians uh, from Dr Gray's, but also independent clinical input uh, as well. So uh, absolutely, timetables and timescales are important. Um, what I would say is that hopefully our investment that I am putting forward, putting on the table for Ragmore, and also, of course, the investment for Dr Gray's, I hope these will give clinicians assurance. And I will continue the conversation with clinicians from Ragmore, uh, as I did uh, last week. Audrey Nicol. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As the Cabinet Secretary has set out today, safety is the absolute priority in ensuring enhanced services in Murray. So can the Cabinet Secretary outline how NHS Grampian will support staff training and development 
across the multidisciplinary team. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I can be brief and say that uh, this was part of my discussion with uh, the Chair and Chief Executive of NHS, uh, Grampy, and this is one of those, again, issues uh, that, that, that we have to uh, grapple with when it comes to uh, Model 6, but also, of course, uh, in the interim and the Bridge Model 4 uh, solution too, because uh, we know that there have been changes since 2018, and there is a question and concern about uh, making sure that staff are appropriately trained, having not done certain procedures since 2018. So that is all part of the consideration, but I have had an absolute commitment from NHS Grampian uh, that that training element uh, will be core to, 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 to developing uh, Model 6 and uh, Model 4 in the future. Jimmy Johnson to be followed by Emma, Emma Roddick. Uh, thank you. Given the uh, Scottish Government hope a version of Model 4 would be delivered in two years, and as Douglas Ross rightly highlighted, there is no indication yet of how, models, uh, how long Model 6 will take to deliver, it is likely there will be a considerable ongoing reliance on transferring maternity patients to hospitals out with Murray for the next few years. The Cabinet Secretary did not answer Douglas Ross' question on blue light transfers for Murray, and the ambulance service was not mentioned once in his statement. So can the Cabinet Secretary advise me what impact the ongoing need for patient transports relating to matern maternity services will have on our already under pressure ambulance service and what discussions he has had with the service on any additional support they'll need to undertake this role longer term? I think it's a really good point and forgive me that uh, I try to take as note of, of many of the questions that Douglas Ross uh, asked me as possible. Uh, there have been conversations with the Scottish Ambulance Service uh, around this uh, point. They are under extreme pressure, of course. Uh, that's why we're investing in additional recruitment. Uh, and of course, the Scottish Ambulance Service announced yesterday they've had a record year uh, of recruitment over the last uh, financial year. Uh, the Scottish Ambulance Service will be critical to part of the solution. Uh, of course, we hope that when we implement the full Model 6, uh, that of course there will be a, a much lesser uh, reliance on, on the Scottish Ambulance Service. But, uh, of course, remember we say 80 to 90 per cent of births, we hope when Model 6 is up and running, will be in place. So even once Model 6 is there in place, uh, they will still need the involvement potentially of the Scottish Ambulance Service. So they will be critical uh, in terms of the discussions uh, that take place in relation to, to restoring consultant-led maternity services at Dr Grace. Emma Roddick to be followed by Carol Mocker. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The increased investment in services at Dr Grace and Ragmore is very welcome. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline the improvements in Ragmore that the new investment is expected to deliver? And can you offer any reassurance to those within Ragmore who may be concerned about capacity issues during the interim option one? Option four, Cabinet, sorry. Cabinet uh, yes, I, I visited Ragmore uh, myself, and I think anybody that has been to Ragmore uh, Maternity Ward uh, will see very clearly the constraints under which they are operating. And obviously, I had time to speak to some of the consultants and the nurses uh, and the midwives who are in the unit uh, at that moment in time. So, uh, the, 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 the money uh, that we have put forward is part of the redevelopment of that infrastructure. Uh, clearly, there is need to improve that capital infrastructure. Uh, what we are also, of course, looking to do uh, is improve uh, staffing or, or increase staffing, uh, because we know there are staffing challenges uh, there. And, and, and it is not just recruitment, uh, I should say, what we are doing is working with NHS Highland. And this will be the same for, for, for Grampian, no doubt, but it's not just about recruitment, it's about retention, and that's going to be really, really important moving forward. So um, I, I, I know that there are concerns currently about uh, the, the infrastructure at Ragmore. Uh, I hope the investment we've put in the table will help to, to, to give some uh, element of, uh, uh, of hope and reassurance to people uh, that we are taking this not just seriously, but putting our money uh, where our mouth is. Carol Mochin to be followed by Jackie Dunbar. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, we know that uh, there are significant pressures already placed on the existing work workforce in rural health boards, such as NHS Grampian, and that it is, as you say, struggling with both staff recruitment and staff retention. Could the Cabinet Secretary therefore tell the Chamber what plans he has to remedy existing staffing difficulties and indeed why Parliament should trust that this Government has the plans in place to ensure its actions on workforce-related recommendations will have an effective and lasting impact and deliver for both the services and those that rely on these services? Cabinet Secretary. Why people can trust us on, on staffing is because under this Government we have record staff in our NHS, 28,700 more 
full-time equivalents and 22 per cent increase since uh, 2006. So they can trust that we will uh, grow the workforce, but it isn't just about growing the workforce, as I said a moment ago. I think retention is hugely important. That's why we'll be working uh, with Grampian, but not just with the health board. I think there's got to be, and there always will have to be, a multi-agency approach to, to, to retention. And that's why we'll work with the local authority um, uh, around, around uh, accommodation, for example, around schooling for families that wish to move to Murray. I spoke to a couple of um, uh, consultants who, who who had moved uh, their family to Murray, and when I asked them uh, why they kind of almost looked at, uh, what was the reason for, for coming to Murray, uh, lifestyle came up as almost the number one issue for, 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 for them all. Uh, and so I think we should capitalise on that, uh, but we've got to ensure, ensure the appropriate support uh, is also there for people who uh, uproot themselves from other parts of the country uh, to, to, to Murray. It's an attractive place to work. There's great opportunity there. And now, because of announced Model 6, I think there's a really uh, attractive vision for the future of Dr Gray's, which they can be a part of. I call Jackie Dunbar, who joins us remotely, to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Thank you, President Officer. It is very welcome that the voices of families and service users in Murray have been listened to throughout this process. And the Cabinet Secretary set out how continued stakeholder engagement will be delivered as the service is developed going forward. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I commit absolutely uh, to the investment that is needed. I, I commit to, uh, of course, keeping Parliament updated. Uh, we will invest in the staffing, we will invest in the infrastructure. Uh, and, of course, it is important that we are talking about Rigmore. Uh, and, 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 and Dr Gray's, but of course uh, I'm keeping uh, 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 in conversation with Grampian uh, whatever is needed to be done uh, at, at Aberdeen uh, as well, though the facilities there uh, we know are excellent. I should also say uh, that this is a, a cross-portfolio approach, although I am leading uh, on this, understandably so. Uh, you can imagine I'm speaking to uh, the likes of the, the, the Transport Secretary uh, and indeed others uh, around uh, improvements that can be made uh, for those that have to travel to make that journey easier. Thank you. Before calling the next speaker, I'm going to return to the earlier point of order. Given the number of members who still wish to ask a question, I'm minded to accept uh, a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 to extend up to, by up to 30 minutes uh, the business. I would ask uh, Douglas Ross to move such a motion. An officer moved. Thank you. Um, is the Chamber agreed? That appears to be agreed. Um, I now call uh, that extends business by up to 30 minutes. There will be consequential uh, implications for the rest of the business, including dis decision time. Uh, but at this point, I call Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Karen Adam. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. <laughs> Deputy Presiding Officer, the issues at the heart of this review are not unique to Murray. Expectant mothers in Caithness currently face a 100-mile trip to Rigmore to give birth. Sometimes they make that journey in the snow and in the dark. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if he will commit here and now to a similar independent review of Caithness maternity services? And if he won't, can he explain to those expectant mothers in Caithness why they cannot expect the same level of service as mothers in Murray? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, he knows, uh, I'm sure, that the Best Start North review was commissioned jointly by NHS Grampian, NHS Highland, uh, NHS Orkney, NHS Shetland to look at the challenges facing maternity services across the north of Scotland. The review is being carried out in consultation with local people to develop the best possible sustainable model for maternity services in the future. The review, of course, includes services delivered from Caith Nest. Changes to Rigmore and investment that comes with that will improve the services for all women in NHS Highland who travel to Rigmore to give birth, as well as accommodating women from Murray. And I have agreed uh, publicly uh, the last time I travelled uh, to Murray when I was asked about this, uh, I will uh, uh, meet with uh, the, the campaign groups uh, in Caithness. I understand uh, their concerns about the current situation, but hopefully to give them a reassurance uh, about the fact uh, that the, 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 the issue around uh, Caithness is being considered and is part of the current review underway. Thank you. Karen Adam, who joins us uh, remotely, to be followed by Ariane Burgess. Thank you, President Officer. We know that a number of factors contribute to making it more difficult to recruit staff to work in rural areas, and the Cabinet Secretary outlined if there will be fresh approaches to recruitment and contract, such as hub and spoke models, with larger hospitals to ensure that specialisms can be delivered in Dr Grace. Cabinet Secretary. 
Sure, yes, that I mean, has, has to be absolutely part of the solution. Uh, we know that, of course, uh, we have to make uh, posts uh, uh, attractive. Uh, that might include, for example, working in different sites. I think that's absolutely uh, correct. It may be, of course, also uh, mixing a, a clinical role with an academic role, for example. So whatever we can do to make these posts more attractive, uh, we will absolutely look to do and explore. Ariane Burgess to be followed by Sue Webber. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I join with colleagues across the Chamber in recognising the hard work from community groups like Keep Mum that have kept Murray Maternity Services on the agenda? I welcome the announcement that the Scottish Government will progress Model 6, which will see a return to full consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's and their commitment to recruiting more specialist staff to deliver this. How will the Cabinet Secretary engage with stakeholder groups to monitor progress on this project? Uh, well, I, I will continue to engage with all stakeholders, from clinicians to elected representatives to the local community. In fact, uh, I am due to speak to Keep Mum uh, uh, and the campaign groups uh, straight after this, although it may be slightly delayed given the uh, extension to business. So I will continue to uh, engage with local community groups uh, and, and be absolutely uh, involved in this process. And I hope that the transparency we are providing will give elected members plus local community groups the reassurance around what they can expect by what time. Sue Webber to be followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned that Model 4 was a bridge to Model 6, but this in itself could take up to two years to establish. As the Cabinet, Cabinet Secretary will know, and as we have heard already today, getting to Model 4 will require substantial investment in both recruitment and the existing workforce. Given the existing and long-standing issues with recruitment and retention in the health boards, what immediate steps will the Cabinet Secretary take to ensure the workforce is in place in time? And importantly, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the two years for the establishment of Model 4 is the very limit of time and not a target? Cabinet Secretary. What I would say is that is precisely why we want to bring forward a timetable in an open, transparent way. Uh, I would not expect it to, 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 to take longer than two years to answer Sue Weber's question directly. But of course, I want that work on timetable to be done, uh, and that's why it's so important that is done. And I update Parliament on that. Uh, and it's so important that we get that clinical input because all of us, I don't think there's a difference actually between what all of us uh, want. We want to see, it sounds like all of us who have spoken want uh, a return to a consultant led uh, service uh, in Murray. We all want it as quickly as possible. I've got to be guided by the clinical view about doing that safely uh, because I would not, I certainly uh, am not intending to be uh, the health secretary that makes a decision that puts women at risk. And I completely accept the point uh, that there is risk in the current model, which I can hear people uh, saying. So, so we want to improve the situation uh, as best we can. And of course, uh, making uh, employment uh, sustainable is, is, is absolutely a part of that, and I hope the investment that I've put on the table and the government is bringing forward uh, is again an indication of our commitment. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the initial investment. I suspect there will be further investment in, in, in the years to come, but it's an initial commitment uh, to, to, to restoring consultant-led maternity services at Dr. Grace. Thank you. Since taking the motion without notice, a number of colleagues have pressed their buttons. I will take a couple of them, but I am not going minded to take uh, all of those that have pressed their buttons since then, as we do need to move on to um, um, further business. But I call Gillian uh, Martin to be followed by Miles Briggs. Thank you, President Officer. I also want to ask about recruitment challenges. Scottish Health Service has seen a reduction in the number of qualified staff from Europe applying for positions in Scotland's NHS since Brexit impacting rural services like Dr Gray's. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what discussions the Scottish Government has had with the UK Government to enable us to put in place migration policies that are better suited to the needs of our maternity services and the women who use them, particularly in rural Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, uh, we have had conversations, uh, as you can imagine, with the UK Government right across uh, portfolios on the impact of, uh, of, of Brexit on the workforce, and that's on various different workforces. Uh, I think what I'm really keen to do is to ensure that, from a, an NHS Scotland perspective, um, how, do we, how do we take a coordinated approach to international recruitment? That will include, of course, EU recruitment. Uh, but, for example, when I visited NHS Fife recently, the Victoria uh, Hospital, uh, I met with nurse recruits from uh, India, uh, from the Philippines, from the UAE. Uh, and, and, and what I think we need to do is take a coordinated approach, because Scotland is an exceptionally attractive 
uh, place uh, to work. Uh, Highlands and Grampian are uh, exceptionally attractive places uh, to work. And what we've got to do is make sure the support for all of the people uh, who come here, that wraparound support is there for them. So I think doing that, targeting particular countries, uh, including those in the European uh, Union, uh, we, we should do that. I, I'm not expecting additional help, I have to say, from the UK government uh, in that, but I will continue to push them uh, in this regard. And two very brief supplementaries. First, Miles Briggs, uh, and then Claire Adams. Thank, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Um, the Cabinet Secretary outlined £5 million which will be made available to NHS Grampian to support moving forward changes in Murray. Can he outline what this funding will be used for? And as has been outlined throughout uh, this statement, um, there are significant challenges being faced by families being transferred to Aberdeen. So can he also say what additional support will be provided to these families, especially with regards to accommodation when they are in the Granite City? I mean, the £5 million will be there to support the restoration uh, of the, the, the service. That is, that is clear. We'll, again, uh, uh, come forward with further detail in an open, transparent manner about how that money uh, is being sent. Uh, I will look at uh, his request for additional support. I don't think it's an un unreasonable one, uh, having heard from uh, now a number of parents, uh, of course, that have had to, to make that journey. So uh, where we can provide additional support uh, for accommodation or for any other purpose, then I'm open-minded to that. Finally, briefly, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Yesterday, we had a very important committee to be on perinatal um, mental health. Um, in the intervening period, and, and while the, the changes are being implemented, what reassurance can the Cabinet Secretary give that the perinatal and postnatal mental health of mothers will be um, protected and they will get the support they need in this intervening time? And as briefly as possible, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I, I spoke to NHS uh, Grampian uh, and NHS Highland about that very issue about perinatal and postnatal uh, mental health. There is a key consideration, uh, particularly as we move towards uh, Model 6, but that, that interim option of Model 4 is to provide as much of that postnatal, perinatal support as we possibly can, and that includes mental health support too. Thank you very much. That concludes this item uh, of business. It will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business.